Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Intermediate Algebra. In this video, we're going to look at section 6.3, which is operations with radicals. We're going to look at adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing when dealing with radicals. The key that we have to first identify when working with radicals is like radicals. Just like like terms, we have to look, find like radicals. Now, a like radical is defined as having the same index and, and that's very important, and the same radicand. They have to have both of these in order to be like radicals. So let's look at this example. These are like radicals because they have the same index. They're both cubed roots. And they have the same radicand. Here we have x squared for both of them. So these are like uh, radicals. So if we were to add them or subtract them, we could actually say, well, 2 plus or minus this 7 value if we were doing addition or subtraction. So we have to identify that they are like radicals by having the same index and the same radicand. And hopefully we remember those terms that this is the index and everything under that radical is defined as the radicand. Here we have another example. We have indexes of 7, so that's the same. And our radicand for this one is a squared b c to the fourth. Well, this is a squared b c to the fourth. So they would be the same. They are like radicals, same index, same radicand. Here I have one of them. Here I have four of them. That coefficient is just the number out front. Now, we've dealt with combining like terms when it comes to adding or subtracting. And if we look at this example, this should look relatively familiar. <clears throat> These variables are the same, and they have the same power. That's essentially what we did when we looked at a like radical. It had to have the same index and the same radicand. Well, they have to have the same variable and the same power to be a like term. So if I were to add or subtract these, I'd say, well, negative 2x plus 5x's is going to be 3x's. We can do the same thing with radicals. So if we're going to add or subtract, I say, well, these are both square roots of the radicand 2. They're, these are like radicals. So I can do that operation. If I have negative 2 of them and I'm going to add 5 of them, I'm going to get 3 of these square roots of 2. What about this one here? Well, I look at the index and I say, well, they're both square roots. They both have a radicand of 2. But we also have to consider what's outside of them. Here I have x and y. Here I only have x. So if we just for a moment imagine that square root of 2 not being there, this determines that they're not like terms, just like we were used to. So we've identified that these aren't like terms. There's nothing I can do with that. So we have to identify not just the radicals, but we have to still recall other like terms where we have variables. All right, let's look at some. Uh, addition and subtraction examples. For the first example, I have negative square root of 5 plus 4 square root of 5. The indexes are the same, and the radicands are the same. There are no variables, so we can actually do this. They are like. So if I have negative one of these, and I'm going to add four of them, I'm going to get three of these square roots of 5. So I was able to combine them as like terms. Well, if we look at this one, initially we look at it and say, hey, those aren't the same. They may have the same index, but what's under the radicand is, or the radicands are different. So is there something I could do to maybe simplify it? Well, that's one approach we should always take, is to simplify radicals. 27, I identify as a perfect cube. Well, this is 3 to the third power. So let me just write it as 3 to the third. Minus, well, the square root of 75, maybe I can simplify that a little bit. I know that 75 is 3 times 25. And I know 25 is a perfect square. So maybe I want to write it as a perfect square. So I factored them down. Now I can simplify the radical. Well, my index is 2, and this power is 3. And if we recall in the previous section, we could simplify those. Uh, I can pull out one factor of 3 because 2 goes into 3 one time with a remainder of 1. One factor of 3 comes out with one factor of 3 remaining. Here, <clears throat> I have the square root of 3 times 5 squared using that 
uh, product rule, I could split that up and say the square root of 5 squared is 5. And the square root of 3 is something I can't simplify. So I've simplified these radicals. And now I can reassess, are they like radicals? They have the same index. And now, because I simplified them, they have the same radicand. So if I have three of these and I'm going to subtract five of these, I'm going to get negative two of these square roots of three. What if we have something of this nature? Well, <clears throat> we can see that we have these radicands are different, and their indexes are different as well. But we have to consider all the terms. So if I'm looking at this, I see, well, I have three of these square roots of 7. And I'm going to put a little box around it, that specific shape. And I see I have four square roots of 7. These two terms have the same index and the same radicand. They are like terms. So maybe I can combine them. I have three of them, and I'm going to add four of them. I'm going to have seven of these square roots of 7. The other two terms, we have an index of 3 and a radicand of x. For this term, we have an index of 3 and a radicand of x. So they are like radicals. I can just combine their coefficients. If I have negative 1 of them and I combine it with negative 3 of them, I will have negative 4 of these cubed roots of x. And we've simplified it to two terms instead of four. So maybe this would be something that we'd have to work with in some other math operation. It's easier to work with these two terms instead of all four. Let's look at this one here. <clears throat> this is kind of a combination of the last three. If we look at this, we have a radicand of three, or excuse me, an index of three for both. But their radicands are different. So maybe I want to simplify them just like I did in this example. Well, here we have the cubed root of 3a to the fourth. And I know that I can pull out a factor of a because 3 goes into 4 once. So one factor comes out. With a remainder of 1, one factor would remain. So I'm going to write it as 2, pull out that one factor of a, and then we'd have 3a. So I was able to simplify this radical. Let's simplify this here. Well, the cube root of 81, I recognize 81 is a perfect square of 9 times 9. But 9 is also a perfect square of 3 times 3. That means that this number here is a perfect square of a perfect square. It's a perfect fourth power number. So 81, and I'm just going to write it up here, is the same thing as 3 to the fourth. So if I replace that in there, then I could simplify it. 3 goes into that 4 one time. So one factor of 3 can come out. And what do I do with that one factor when there's already a number out here? I can multiply them because this is 3 times whatever we have here. Well, if I pull anything out, of, such as a coefficient or a number, I can multiply it. 3 times 3 is 9. We have that a value. So we've dealt with this number. There would still be remaining one factor of 3 and that value of a. Now, we've simplified the radical. Now we can reassess. We have 2a cubed root of 3a. So we have a variable of a on the outside, an index of 3, and a radicand of 3a. Here, we have negative 9a cubed root of 3a. Well, we have that variable of a on the outside, an index of 3, and a radicand of 3a. We can see that everything's the same. The variable on the outside, the index, and the radicand are identical, so we can combine them. Two of these minus 9 of them is going to give me negative 7a cubed root of 3a. So even though it looked kind of hairy at first, we were able to simplify it right down to a single term. All right, what if we're going to multiply and eventually divide these radical expressions or these radical values? Well, if we recall, if we're multiplying, we know how to multiply, especially when dealing with variables. We would just distribute in this case. Negative 2 times 2x would be negative 4x. Negative 2 times 5x would be negative 10x. And if we look at this, we can actually combine like terms. They are like terms. I could have done that back here, but I decided to use the distributive property. Negative 4x's minus 10x's is negative 14x's. Well, let's do the same thing with this example. If I distribute this 
It's the square root of 2 times the square root of 2x. What I'm actually going to use is the product rule of radicals. They have the same index, and I'm multiplying them so I can write them under the same index. The square root of 2 times the square root of 2x is the square root of 2 times 2x. Just distribute it. And then to this one, I'm going to do the same thing. The square root of 2 times the square root of 5x is the square root of 2 times 5x. Now, if I simplify these, well, I have 2 times 2. Well, that's the same thing as 4. The square root of 4, that's a perfect square. I have two factors of 2. So if I simplify the first radical, I get 2 square root of x. Here, I have the square root of 2 times 5. Well, that's the square root of 10. I cannot simplify that. So I get the square root of 10x. These are not like terms. Now, this one, I was able to combine them because they were like terms. These are not like terms. They have the same index, and they ha but they don't have the same radicand. This one has an x. This one has 10x. So we can see that they're not the same. Uh, if we went back to this, we couldn't have added these here. So that's why I decided to stay with the distributed property. We're going to do the same thing on this one. This is an example where we can distribute. We have the square root of 5y times the square root of y. Well, that's the square root of 5 times y times y. Or we can just write it as y squared, right? Simplify as we go. Then we have the square root of 5y times the square root of 5 would be the square root of 5y times 5, which is 25y. Now, we still want to simplify. We always want to simplify as we work with radicals. Well, I can't take the square root of 5, but y squared is a perfect square. 2 goes into 2 once. I can pull out a factor of y with no y's remaining. y square root of 5 is the same as this term, only simplified. Here we have the square root of 25y. 25 is a perfect square. The square root of 25 is 5. And then we'd have that square root of y remaining. So y square root of 5 plus 5 square root of y are not like terms because the indexes are the same, but what's under that index, those radicands, are different. This one's 5 and that one's y. So that's as far as we can go. Now, hopefully, we recall a special method of multiplication that we can use in this case here. Just for a moment, what if I had x plus y times, let's say, x plus 1? Hopefully. We recall, oh, hey, I have two binomials I'm multiplying together. I could just use FOIL, first, outer, inner, last. Well, the same method we would use here is something we could use right there. So let's do that. Let's use FOIL on this, because this is two terms, a binomial, times two other terms, a binomial. So if I use FOIL, the first term, 8 square root of x times 4 square root of x, is going to give me 32 square root of x times x, which is x squared. And we will simplify that. Maybe you recognize that can be simplified right now. So that was the first. Then we're going to do <coughs> oh, yeah, the outer term. 8 square root of x times negative 1 is negative 8 square root of x. And then we'll do the inner terms. We have y times 4 square root of y is 4y square root of x. And then y times negative 1 is negative y. Now we're going to check and see, do we have any like terms? Or is there anything I can simplify and then combine like terms? Well, if I assess this one, the square root of x squared, my index is 2, and it's a square. So I can simplify that to 32x minus 8 square root of x plus 4y square root of x. Even though these have the same radicand and index, they do not both have the same variable on the outside. So they're not like terms. There's nothing I can do with them. These aren't like terms because it doesn't contain the radical and the index. So this is as far as I can go. This is the simplified multiplication of these two binomials. What if we have this here? Well, <clears throat> if we have a binomial squared, we can apply FOIL to it, or we can uh, use the formula, if we recall it, the first term squared plus twice the product of the two terms plus the last term squared. But let's actually write it out and use FOIL, because something squared is just that value 
times itself. So we can use FOIL here. So the first term is square root of 2 times the square root of 2, which is the square root of 4. And I'm going to simplify as I go. The square root of 4 is 2. And then I'd have x square root of 2 and x square root of 2. Those are my inner and outer terms. And then the last term, x times x, is x squared. Now, I can't simplify these radicals, but I can combine like terms. They each have an x, and they both have the square root of 2. Same index, same radicand. So I have x square root of 2 and x square root of 2. I have two of these x square roots of 2. 2 plus 2x square roots of 2 plus x squared. This is the simplified version of this binomial squared. It just contains a radical. We simplified as we went and combined like terms. So it incorporates all the concepts that we looked at up to this point. All right, let's look at division. Now, if we recall, uh, in the previous section, we defined what it means to have a radical in simplest form. Uh, we can't have any powers that are higher than the index. We can't have any negative or zero exponents. Uh, and the last one that we looked at was there couldn't be a radical left in a denominator. To simplify it, we can't leave a radical in a denominator. So let's look at this one here and start simplifying it. Here we have a fraction under the radical. We can't have that. So I'm going to use the quotient rule to split it up and maybe simplify. Well, the square root of 4 I know is 2. But the square root of 5, well, 5 is not a perfect square. That would give me an irrational number. So that's as far as I can go in simplifying the radical. But it's not completely simplified because there is still a radical in a denominator. And our rules of simplifying radicals says that's one we can't have. So we have to do something to get that radical out of the denominator. And what we're going to do is something called rationalizing a denominator. So let's look at this 2 square root of 5. One thing is to assess what is the index. The index in this case is 2. So in order to get rid of this radical in the denominator, I would need to have a perfect square, a perfect second power number. Well, if this had one more factor of 5 under that radical, I would be able to take its square root. Well, the nice thing about fractions is we can change them if we recall changing denominators if necessary. Well, if I had one more 5 under that radical, it would be a perfect square. And then I could simplify it. Well, what I do to the bottom of a fraction, if I do it to the top, I'm essentially only multiplying by 1. So I'm not changing its value. Now, if we simplify this, well, I'm just multiplying these. So that'd be the square root of 25. And the top is 2 times the square root of 5. Now I can simplify this. The square root of 25 is just 5. So by making this a perfect square and doing the same operation to the numerator, I was able to simplify it. There is no longer a radical in the denominator. The radical in the numerator is as simplified as possible. This is a simplified radical as far as we can take it. And what we did was the process of um, rationalizing the denominator. So be familiar with that term. Let's look at this example here. Here, this is numbers and variables. So let's consider that. We're going to use the quotient rule. I'm going to split it up as a square root of 2x and the square root of 5y. And the reason why I went right to the quotient rule is because I couldn't simplify anything under that radical to begin with. 2x and 5y, nothing in common. So now that I've done that, I can look at this denominator and say, well, I need to get that radical out of the denominator. To do that, these would have to be a perfect power of that index. Well, if I think about it, it's a square, right? an index of 2. So I would need perfect squares. Well, I need one more factor of 5. So now it's 5 times 5. That's a perfect square. I would need one more factor of y. That's y times y. That's a perfect square. So now I would have perfect squares. What I do to the bottom 
I have to do to the top. So I also multiply the numerator by the square root of 5y. Now, to simplify it, <coughs> I'm squaring a square root. Essentially, that makes it go away. If we recall this rule, the nth root of a to the n, when these are the same, it simplifies to that base. So what we're going to get is the square root of 5y squared is just 5y. Now, the product rule says we can just combine them under the same radical. 2x times 5y is going to give me 10xy. This radical is now simplified. There is no radical in the denominator. The uh, index is greater than our powers here. They have no common factors. We can't simplify that any further. That is our simplified expression. Let's look at this one here. Now, <clears throat> there's two ways to approach this. This is our quotient. We have a quotient of radicals. Now, I can do it in one of two ways. And the first way is if we recall our quotient rule, like we were able to split that up, maybe I could bring them together. The cubed root of 10 fourths. And let me. So if we do that, well, maybe I can simplify that fraction. Because sometimes it's easier to simplify this and deal with smaller values than deal with larger values. Well, 10 over 4, I know I can just reduce as a fraction. It's the cubed root of 5 halves. Now I just have a small denominator of 2 instead of 4. Sometimes that's going to help, especially when you have larger numbers and lots of uh, variables that may be in there. Maybe we can simplify it like this and reduce something. Now, if I um, rewrite this back into the form it was, it's the cubed root of 5 oh, over the cubed root of 2. Now, how do I simplify that? And if you notice, 5 halves and 10 fourths, there's something common there. We just simplified it. Now, this is a cube. I've identified the index to be a cube. What's under that radical would have to be a perfect cube. Well, I only have one factor of 2. I would need 2 more to make it a perfect cube. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply it by the cubed root of 4, which is 2 times 2, right? Two more factors of 2. What I do to the bottom, I do to the top. And now I can simplify this. The cubed root of 2 times the cubed root of 4 is the cubed root of 8. Well, the cubed root of 8 is 2, simplified. Here I have the cubed root of 5 times the cubed root of 4. That's the cubed root of 20. And that doesn't simplify because 5 isn't a perfect cube. And 4 it may be a perfect square. But that doesn't help us because we're looking at perfect cubes. So this simplified is the cubed root of 20 over 2. Now, I did say <coughs> excuse me, that there was another way to do this. And that other way to do it is to leave it as it is. We have the cubed root of 10 and the cubed root of 4. Let's jump right straight to rationalizing that denominator. Well, if I want to do that, maybe I should factor this down first. 4 is 2 squared. So I'm just rewriting it in its factored form. Well, I already have a perfect square under that radical. I would have to essentially have one more factor of 2 in order to have three of them, to have a perfect cube. So if I only need one more factor of 2, I can write it like that, the cubed root of 2. That's that one more factor of 2 that I need. What I do to the bottom, I do to the top. And if you think about it, this is the same value we used before. So now I can multiply them. And if I do that, the cubed root of 4 times the cubed root of 2 is the cubed root of 8. And the cubed root of 8 is 2. Here, the cubed root of 10 times the cubed root of 2 is the cubed root of 20. We can use that product rule, just multiply them under the uh, index, or under the radicand, 10 times 2 is 20. And if you notice, that's the same answer we just had, the cubed root of 20 over 2. This is simplified. I can't simplify the radicand any further. And there's no longer a uh, radical in that denominator. 